Hey everybody, Coach Dustin here from KC Crease. I hope you're all doing your very best. Wanted to take a minute today to talk about traffic and maintaining your visual lines or your visual lanes. Some call it visual attachment. It's all just coach speak and fancy way to say keeping your eyes on the puck and having the ability to see the lane between you and the shooter. Traffic is something that is going to continue to increase as players continue to get bigger and stronger and more willing to get to the front of the net. So we have to have a plan as goaltenders on how we're going to manage moving into traffic, how we're going to manage keeping our visual attachment on pucks as we're dealing with traffic in front of the net. We have Landry as our demo goalie for this particular video. That's Landry right there with the American Stars and Stripes helmet. And then we got longtime KC Crease student Damon acting as our screen today. What we're working on through this drill is very simply we're replicating a pass from the corner out to the slot for the shot in. We're going to show two clips, one a good clip and one a bad clip, and then we'll go back and talk about it. So let's take the first look. There's the good clip. We'll share why here in a moment. I want you to start thinking about what you saw and what you didn't, and that's the bad clip. So if we look at it again a little slower on this good clip, it's paramount that goalies, we always keep our visual lane to the puck as long as we possibly can. So as we deal with this first shift, what, the call, what I call the good example, watch Landry's torso. He's going to roll out, but keep his vision to the side. And then he pushes out. And all we're worried about for this specific drill, coach the drill, worry about the drill, is just keeping the vision. So you can see he comes out, sets his feet, and his torso, you can see the lanes there, is shifting towards his glove side. So his torso is doing that, which allows him to get his head around the screen and see the puck. And the modern theory when it comes to dealing with traffic is look over the shoulder first, then at the elbow, then at the hip, then at the knees. So Landry doesn't feel comfortable looking over because Damon is so tall. So this is a depth and a spot that Landry's comfortable peeking around the traffic and still being in his stance. So if I back it up just a little bit, again, let's just watch it one more time. Sorry, wrong direction. So we play it here. Landry pushes out, holding that visual lane the whole time, gets set, and then sees the release. It's paramount that we see the release because even if the shot forces us to move through the screen, i.e. having to go from this side across to make a save, we can at least read that release and understand that the puck is going here or here or wherever it may be going based on what that blade shows us at the time of release and then react accordingly. Now that we've got that done, let's look at a poor example from Landry. In this particular one, we can see he shifts into the screen. So as he moves out, again, nice and slow, he literally shifts behind the screen, temporarily blinding himself. He cannot see through the screen. He cannot see the release. So if you are watching this and you are a shooter, this is the time to take your shot. As goaltenders, this is the time that you have put yourself in a bad situation. And shooters are getting smarter and they do understand that this is the prime opportunity to take the shot because by the time that you poke your head back around, that shot's already in route to you and then you're late picking up the release you're late finding the puck and that's how screen goals go in so we can see again that Landry goes directly behind the screen and then pokes his head out allowing him to see the release now for the sake of our drill we ask the shooter to hold on a little longer but we have other clips of this where we didn't put that restriction on the shooter and the shooter is firing pucks as soon as they get behind the screen Goalies have a tough time picking it up because, again, it's already on route. So we want to hold that line as long as possible. We want to make sure that, again, we're shifting out and we're keeping it on that side that the puck came from. Again, our puck is coming from over here, 
coming to this blade. So we want to hold our vision on that same side over here. It'd be the same thing if we flipped it from the other way and the puck was coming from our blocker side to the middle. We'd want to hold our vision on our blocker side without crossing over. Essentially, what we want to avoid is going behind a screen to get your eyes over here and then having to go back around to get your eyes over here. It's no good. We want to avoid that. We want to avoid going into the screen and then peeking back out. That's, that's less efficient, right? So hold that visual line on the side until the screen makes you cross over, but you want to, at the very least, do everything you can to fight for that visual tracking up until the point of release and then react accordingly. If you have any questions, comments, criticisms, feel free to either email me, kccrease at gmail.com, or feel free to leave them in the thread below. As always, don't forget to follow KC Crease on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. In addition to this, the YouTube channel. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And I think it'd be awesome if you shared it with just one goalie. Or maybe a shooter that you know needs to score a little bit more. Either or. If you like this, as well as some of the other videos, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the crease.